in terms of what he's up to. I'm good now. Um, and Derek is having a baby and um, came sooner than expected, but you know, we support our guys always in that situation. Had to rush up today. Yes. Hey, yeah, man. Um, what's the status on Al? What does he have to go through today? If you can share that. And also, how does Marcus look to you? Yeah, Al is still doubtful. Um, he'll go through the protocols. And, you know, we're unsure about his, his status until some testing results come back. Um, possibility, but as of now, he's doubtful. Uh, Marcus is looking better. He still has to test it out pregame, but he's listed as probable. And until uh, he goes before the game, we'll, we'll know from then, but uh, look better today and shoot around and we're hopeful and expect him to play. He may, uh, league-wide, the percentage of shots at the rim have dropped for each of the past five postseasons, and right now it's at a 20-year low. I was wondering if you could just speak to how difficult it is to finish um, at the rim in the postseason, and if you have any theories on why that trend is happening. Yeah, I mean, it depends. A lot of switching, a lot more switching prevents uh, guys getting downhill to the basket. You know, we played some quality teams with uh, rim protectors uh, in Milwaukee and and uh, Miami now. And so a big part of the deterrent is to protect the paint and make you beat them from the outside. You saw how that worked for us in our favor against Milwaukee. Um, you know, and these teams more so than ever loading up the paint, you know, not just with the rim protector, but everybody helping on specific people to protect the paint and uh, leading to threes. And it's almost a make or miss uh, type of situation or a gamble on their part to make you prove from the outside. and. If you have an off shooting night, it benefits them. If you have a hot shooting night, you usually win. And so uh, we want to find the balance. Um, like I think we did game six, game six against Milwaukee was one of our best where we, you know, got to the basket and then found shooters as well. And so it's always on us to put them in the best position to get downhill, um, find favorable matchups to get the basket and then exploit the, the outside shooting when the guys over help. You made Jimmy started having his way there in the second half, both scoring and, and getting to the line. What is the benefit of, of Marcus kind of setting the table there in the backcourt? Yeah, obviously defensive player of the year, one of the guys that sets the tone for us. But in general, I you know, with some of the switching we're doing, everybody's going to get a piece. And I think we did a poor job specifically at the free throw line. Uh, you know, we understanding how he wants to bait and get to the line, staying down on pump fakes, all the things we talked about before. And just uh, showing your hands at times where he's trying to sell fouls. And so he's a heady player that um, used our aggressiveness against us at times, but, um, you know, a poor defensive effort on him for the most part on the night and really aided by the fouling and some of the turnovers that led to direct baskets for him. Ime, was, was Al feeling ill Monday or Tuesday uh, after the shoot around or do, during the shoot around? Did he tell you anything? And how's he feeling now? You said Al? Yeah. No, um, he was not feeling ill. He, like I said the other day, he's he's feeling fine. He's feeling okay. It's something that was unexpected. And he's feeling fine since that day. And, and since, you know, just the protocols and testing he has to pass and we'll go from there. Ime, you, you've endured a lot, uh, even just to start this series with, with Al and Marcus and, and, and now Derek. When something like that comes up with Derek, just kind of part of life, part of the game that you kind of say, okay, let's move on. Just to, the impact of not having him as well, but just kind of based on uh, how much you care about your players and these guys, what they go through. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, you don't want to say tough situation. We knew he was expecting a baby soon and was going to get induced in between some games and uh, things happen in life. And like I said, we support our guys and always want them to be there in those situations for their family. Um, but we've had guys out quite a bit this year in this uh, postseason, I've had to make do, make do. And so um, Marcus being out last game, we beat Milwaukee without Marcus game and three games without Rob, like I mentioned. And so um, kind of mixing and matching early in the season, going through COVID situations and injuries. Um, and then, you know, you get two back, you possibly you get two back and you lose one tonight it is what it is. And you have to keep playing. Um, look at series we've played, uh, Middleton being out, they, they played us tough without him. Uh, Lowry being out now. Miami's going to do what they do, and we have to do the same.
Hey, Aime, um, when you watched the film back, what did you think of the shot selection, particularly from three? Like, were they shots that just you guys didn't hit? Did you miss some that you thought in terms of taking some that you thought you guys should have taken? A little bit of both. I uh, felt we had some good looks that we missed, but um, at times we settled for some contested ones or we had some driving angles. And that was a point of emphasis in the Milwaukee series where game one, I felt we settled for too many uh, contested threes and we have a chance to drive and get other guys wide open looks. And so it's always a balance. Um, you know, guys are shooting extremely well at times, but you have to recognize who's closing out on you, the defender, uh, the level of defender, and then think about your next your next teammate getting them a wide open shot instead of a contested one. So there were some we could have uh, taken back and Miami is very similar to Milwaukee in that way. They pack the paint and then closeouts, we want to play against those closeouts and get better looks for others. How important is Adebayo to what they do defensively? And then from your, from your view, what is it that he does for them defensively? Oh, he's obviously the anchor back there. They have some quality perimeter defenders, but his ability and versatility to switch at times and protect the paint at times, uh, you know, everything hinges on that. And to your point, or to what you're saying, what you're asking, my point is his versatility is really key to them. Um, you know, started the game off, he started switching a lot, and then they'll drop into regular coverage and try to keep you off balance as far as that. And, um, something that we adjusted to well in the first half and then his physicality behind that. Uh, it's a modern day NBA center that can get out and switch. It's some of the benefits we have with guys like Al and Rob and Grant, bigs that can guard the perimeter at times, but also protect the paint. And so um, basically they're anchored to what they do. Let's the perimeter guys be a little more aggressive and take risks. Uh, but learn some of those guys gambling with him back there protecting. Ime, it, it seems the phrase hunting matchups has taken greater prominence the last few seasons where maybe it used to be just creating mismatches. I want to know how the evolution has happened with NBA offenses from just creating mismatches to hunting matchups you want. And then how much of it, that is part of your game plan? How much of it just sort of happens by what's happening in the game and who's on the court? For the most part, I, you know, we like to pride ourselves on having no pick on guys, you know, you know, quality defenders that teams can't go after, but that's not the case with most teams. Most teams have, you know, lesser defenders, maybe their own, you know, offensively shooters. And so uh, I don't think it's anything new. Uh, it was happening back when I played and even in the nineties, trying to find a mismatch and take advantage of it. And, uh, you know, a guy like Butler who can score a lot of ways, really tries to get the, we, we want length and size and, and stronger guards and bigs on him. Well, he's going to try to get some of those guys off to free himself up for easy baskets and to initiate for others. And so, um, you know, every team has adjustments and who they want to keep off. Uh, Miami has guys that we like to attack more as well. And so I'm not saying it's anything new, but, um, you know, you have to have your adjustments in place because of that, knowing certain guys want to get personnel off them and vice versa with us. We like Jason and Jalen on, certain matchups, although they can score on quality defenders as well. So just part of the game, um, we try to keep our best five defenders on the court and where we can switch a lot and not have a lot of drop off, but every team doesn't have that luxury. Thank you.